Good morning. Where is, there we go. Good morning, hi, Dr. Melody here with Fit Plus Faith. And happy Monday to you. Welcome to day 25. We are going through our Rooted in Christ Devo. And we're going through our Rooted in Christ devotional here, 72 days of growing in your identity in Christ. And so that's what we are up to today is day 25. We're talking about being made alive to Christ, alive in Christ. As you are hopping on right now, go ahead and say hi. Let us know where you're coming in from. Happy Monday to you. So great to see you. And I'm excited to just kick this week off together. And what a great topic and depot that we have in order to do that. So great to see you. I hope you've all had a good weekend. I have a new plant. <laughs> We've been remodeling or re not remodeling, redecorating our living room over the past uh, few weeks. And so it's just so exciting. Exciting things are happening all around me. And now we have this new gorgeous plant. <laughs> it's the little things in life, right? But when you make your home a space that just feels so comfortable and so welcoming and so relaxing, it's just an exciting thing. So that's what I've been up to. And good to see you, Phyllis. Great to see you. So we're going to go ahead and dive in today. We're talking about being made alive. We are alive with Christ. Amen. We are dead to our sins and our transgressions and our past life. We are made alive and new in Christ. So great to see you, Janelle, coming in from Ohio. I love that. So ladies, if you're catching the replay as well, go ahead and type replay below. We still want to know where you're coming in from. Elizabeth coming in from Alabama. Love it. So that's what's so much fun about our group is that we are a beautiful community of sisters in Christ all over the country and all over the world. And so it's just fun to see how we're all connected. So let's pray and then we're going to dive in to day 25. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. We just thank you and praise you uh, for another day waking us up, another day that we just are stepping into your grace. We're stepping into your power, into your beauty. We see you all around us. We thank you, God, that every day you are already there. You are waiting for us. You are leading us. We are never alone. We thank you for this community of women coming together to start their day and their week together as well. We thank you and praise you for every single woman that you have touched through this ministry, through Fit Plus Faith, through the Healthy Christian Women podcast, through all the different things that we do and the way that we serve. We just thank you and praise you, God, for the work you are doing in our midst and in us as a community for the support and love and prayer that we give to one another. What a blessing that is. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you speak to me and through me in this message of being made alive. We are made alive in Christ. We thank you and praise you, Lord, that you choose to do that for us, <laughs> that you just partner with us and you just don't leave us on our own. We thank you and praise you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Great to see you, Tanya, as well. All right, ladies. So wonderful. Oh, Teresa, what's up, girl? One of my girls from San Diego right here with me. How fantastic. So wonderful to see you. So today we are being made alive with Christ. That is our identity we're stepping into today. And we're going to talk into Ephesians chapter two in just a minute. I know that Ephesians, the book of Ephesians is so many people's favorite book. There's just so many beautiful nuggets and inspiration in there. So we're going to dive into Ephesians chapter two. And so go ahead and speak out loud and type your declaration below. Our declaration is short, sweet, and powerful today. You're going to say, I, then insert your name, Melody, am alive with Christ. I, Melody, am alive with Christ. That is your declaration for today. Speak it out with power and authority with your mouth. Use the power of your tongue and type it down below. You are alive with Christ. We are dead to our transgressions, those are past, those are done with, we are made alive with Christ. So let's dive into Ephesians chapter two, verses four through seven. I might read a little bit more to kind of complete the picture here, but Ephesians chapter two, verses four through seven. Yes, Sarah, great to see you. Amen, Sarah is alive with Christ. Teresa is alive with Christ, amen. We are alive with Christ. So Ephesians chapter two, verses four through seven, but I think I want to go up a little bit. 
Okay, let's just read Ephesians chapter 2, starting from the beginning, because those first three verses just kind of complete the picture. So Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Oh, but it's just all so good. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So he's talking about Satan. All of us who lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts, like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. That means we were objects of God's wrath because of our sinful nature. Verse 4, but because of his great love for us. <laughs> so all those things of the past, following the enemy, being, being caught up in our sinful nature, you know, in our transgressions, sinning against the Lord, all those things, but they are in the past. So verse 4, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. He did this already, even when we were there, even when we deserved that right? When we deserved the punishment and we deserved not to be saved from our sinful selves. But even then, says God, rich in mercy, still he made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Thank you, God, for your grace. Take a moment and just thank and praise him for his grace. That he didn't wait for us to come to him before he loved us. He loved us and saved us first. Even before we accepted him and said yes to him. Let that be your gratitude and praise today. Praise the Lord right now. Type in the comments. Give God your praise. Use your mouth right now to speak out your praise and admiration for the Lord. Your gratitude for what he has done. Even when... You were in your past transgressions, man. Verse six, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ. Oh my gosh. Isn't that last verse just outrageous? This is Ephesians 2, verse 7. It says, In order that, so God did all this in Christ for us, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness in Christ. It's just so good. And then it just keeps going on. That was that was Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. But it just keeps going on. And it comes to some of the most famous verses of this whole book. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Oh, I could spend so much time on that verse 10 being God's workmanship. And I'm, I'm sure we will come back to that at a different point in our devotions together. It's my one of my favorite verses. But going back to the theme for Ephesians chapter 2, that even in our sin, God did something for us. He loved us and sent Christ for us to pay that price for us, loved us first so that he might just share, share and shower his riches of grace and mercy over us. Man, it is so, so good. Yes, Sarah, thank you, God, for giving me grace and courage to start a new school year. You are right. And that is to be different. You're absolutely right. Tanya, I praise you, God, for everything. Amen. Elizabeth, thank you, Lord, for your grace. Amen. These, not awarenesses, but kind of, these verses just show us how much God loves us 
And it shows us how much we don't have to live in the past and live in our regret and live as a slave and bondage to sin. We may have been there, but we don't stay there. And, and God already paved the way for us to get out. So good. So that, why? So that he could show his riches of mercy to us. I just love verse 7. His incomparable riches of grace. Incomparable riches of grace. You think you've received grace from the Lord? You think you just are overwhelmed by his grace? That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. You've only tasted a little bit of the grace that he has for you. Incomparable riches of grace. Grace that goes on for eternity. Amazing. Expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus. Amazing. Yes, Teresa, God is going to give you everything you need to do it. You are so right. God is going to be with you, Sarah, helping you start this new school year, stepping into something new and scary and overwhelming, but he is with you. He is empowering you. He is going before you. He is leading you in. He's gone before you. You are not alone. Wow, so good. I love this. And in our Devo, if you have yours, if you have your book, there's a few additional questions down here and some reflections. And I love this that it says the Greek. So if we look at the Greek, the original of these verses of what Paul is talking about being made alive, if we look at what that actually means, how that translates, it translates into a new moral life, a new moral life. The old, the immorality is gone. A new moral life is within you and it's being reanimated conjointly with Christ, reanimated conjointly with Christ, being completely joined together, inseparable and being reanimated, being made new, given new life. The dead is gone and new life is arising that is made new and made alive in Christ. Isn't that just so beautiful to kind of, to think about it like that a little bit more? I love it. A new moral life being reanimated conjointly with Christ. Without him, you can only reanimate yourself just a little bit. You can try to do your best in your own strength, but it will never be enough. It'll never be enough. It's a fruitless pursuit. It's striving. It's works-based. That's not how it was meant to be. It says, join with Christ and he will reanimate you in a way that cannot be taken away. And that will reanimate you with life-giving power that you could never do on your own. You could never do it on your own. So we accept the Lord. We accept his grace, his kindness, his mercy. We accept what Jesus has done as the free gift that it is. And we just praise him for it. We praise him for it, that he has delivered us from our sinful nature, from the grip of the enemy. He's given us all the power we need. We call upon the name of Jesus, the name above all names, above all principalities, authorities, and powers. We call upon his name. The enemy will flee from us. The enemy will flee from us because we call upon the name that is above all names. And now our life is reanimated conjointly with Christ. It's, it's so beautiful. It's so powerful. Nothing can touch that. You can't do it on your own. But what it should do is drive you to praise. It should drive you to repentance. And it should drive you to gratitude and just overwhelming, overflowing praise and admiration for what God has done and what Jesus is doing for us. It is in him, right, that we have our strength. It is in him that we have everything. He's given us everything. And that's why I love going through this Devo because it just dives into the scriptures and helps us to see everything that Christ has done and the new identity that he gives us. 
that is ours for the taking. It is ours for the taking. It is our birthright. It is how it was meant to be. It is why Jesus did everything he did to give us this life. Not only the promise of this life here, but the promise of the life to come, of eternity to come. So good. Sarah says, can't wait to listen again when you get home today with your Devo book. Absolutely. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What does it mean to you? And have you been living from that place? So what does that mean to you? How does that impact you? How does that change you? When you think about having a new moral life, being reanimated conjointly with Christ, being made alive, the old is gone, the old is dead, a new reanimated life in Christ, new life in your lungs, new life in your body. You've been made alive again, but you are not the same. You've been made alive again, but you are not the same. You are conjoined with Christ. You are a new creation. You and Christ together. There will never be more than one of you. You are a brand new, never been made before creation when you are joined with Christ. You are reanimated and given new life. You've been given the power against the enemy. You've been freed and delivered from your sin. Your transgression is held against you no more. You have the promise of heaven, the promise of eternity with the Lord. What does that do for you? What does that make you feel? That's what I want to hear. What does that mean to you? And have you been living from this place? Or are you still living stuck in the past, overwhelmed with regret and fear and grief for what, for what was? Have you been living from that place? or not. Allow the newness, allow the awareness of this message to make a change for you, to change your percep your perception, your perspective, your attitude, your actions. When you are overwhelmed by the gift of grace, it says the riches, the riches of grace that he offers you, when you are overwhelmed by that, you have no option but to change. That's what true grace in your life will do. It will create change. It'll change you. It'll change your heart. It'll change your mind. It'll change your perception of others. It'll change your actions toward others. When you are overwhelmed by understanding the power and gift of grace, you have no option but to be changed. If you're not yet changed, it's time to get on your knees and spend some time with the Lord searching into why. What are the strongholds that may still be there? What are the things that God still wants to heal and release you from? Seek him to help guide you into that. Teresa says, I feel confident and bold when you face a situation. Yep, God is working on me every day. Amen. Same here. We are beautiful, perfectly imperfect works of progress in the Lord. We are covered in grace. We are covered in his grace, but we don't abuse it, right? We don't abuse his grace. We don't take it for granted. We don't continue to sin and then say, oh, but his grace covers me. That's not being truly renewed by the fullness of grace in your life. Because when you are when you are so overwhelmed by that, you don't want to go back to the old ways. You don't want to go back to the sins. You don't want to. So your life is made new. It is changed. You move forward in a new way. Like going from glory to glory, glory to glory or grace upon grace. Amen. Elizabeth says he's been working on me hard in the last month or so. I'm thankful he reminded me to turn to this group. That's awesome. I'm so glad. We're so happy to have you here. Yeah. How is that one song? Grace, grace, God's grace. I don't know any of the rest of it, but just that part. <laughs> but what songs of grace may be coming into your mind today? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. 
I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, a new life being reanimated conjointly with Christ, not to be separated. Not to be separated. A brand new creation. But how will you step forward into this creation or not? Will you step forward in that grace, in that mercy, in that power, in that love? Or are you not yet fully taking a hold of it yet? Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> yes, Tanya, he's still working on you, a work in progress. That is right. That is for all of us. That is for all of us. So good. We praise you, Lord, today. We thank you, God, for your grace. Your grace that covers everything. Your grace that is overflowing, abounding, and unending for us. We thank you and praise you, Lord. We thank you and praise you, Lord, for your unending grace upon us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done, that you paved the way so that we are made alive and new in you. You saved us from the eternal bondage of sin. Our hearts are overflowing with gratitude and grace for what you have done. We receive it today, God. We walk in it today. May we not take it for granted. May we just have our spirits fully renewed, fresh eyes, a heart on fire for you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, our comforter and our guide. We thank you and praise you. May our grace be unending. May it flow out of us and onto others as it was always meant to be. Never just for us, but to flow out of us. <laughs> Streams of living water flowing out for all to come to taste and to see that you are good. You are so good. We thank you and praise you, God, for this awareness and revelation today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Ooh, making myself cry. So good. Oh, yay, Christy. What's up, girl? That's so good. I don't know how it goes, though, but Christy's got the words there. So if you know that old song, you know that old little chorus then sing that out today. <laughs> sing that out today about God's grace because I don't want to sing it wrong and then mess it all up. So good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much for being here. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. We are headed into Wednesday as we go into day 26. If you do not yet have your own Rooted in Christ Devo, with all these beautiful reflection questions and journaling space to dive deeper with the Lord for where he has you, to go deeper in your journey, to step into maturity in your spiritual walk, then grab yours here on Amazon, rootedinchristbook.com, and begin your journey today. Thank you for all of you who have gotten your Devo so far. I love hearing and seeing when ladies are getting together and doing it together, when they're showing, they're journaling, when they're talking about how God is moving in their heart. It is beautiful to see. It is beautiful to see because it just leads you. All this is meant is to lead you to the Lord, to lead you to his word, and to continue your journey there. It is not a supplement. It is not meant to take the place of. It is meant to lead you deeper into. So rootedinchristbook.com. Somebody could post that down below. That would be helpful. And for those of you that have gotten your Devo in the past and you have not yet left us an Amazon review, I would highly appreciate that and, and just ask you to do that, please. And that would be really wonderful. So thank you so much for taking the time. I love you, everybody. Have a great week. We um, are going into day 26 on Wednesday, which we are free from the law of sin and death. We are free. We are free. That is the message for Wednesday. If you have not yet posted your declaration below for today, do it right now. You say, I, insert your name, am alive with Christ. I, Melody, am alive with Christ. It's simple. 
It's powerful. It's the truth. I am alive with Christ. Type your declaration down below. Love you all. Thank you so much, Christy. And we'll see you ladies on Friday. I mean, sorry, Wednesday. And then inside our Healthy Christian Women Facebook group as well. All right. Tag some friends. Share this out. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great start of your week. Thank you for being here with me on this Monday morning. Bye, guys.